The Senate will now be in session. All rise for the arrival of the Honorable Senate President and the Senators of the Republic of the Philippines. The Senate has adjourned for a holiday recess after tackling and passing significant legislation for Filipinos. Before adjourning for the holidays, the upper chamber wrapped up its last session days of 2023, making sure to act on urgent and key measures. One of these is the 5.768 trillion national budget, which was recently signed into law as Republic Act 11975 or the 2024 General Appropriations Act. Last December 13, the Senate adopted the Bicameral Conference Committee report on the 5.768 trillion 2024 national budget. Before its ratification in Congress, Senator Sonia Angara, chairperson of the Committee on Finance, led the Senate contingent in the BICAM panel tasked to reconcile the two versions of the proposed General Appropriations Act. Inaasahan po natin na makakatulong ang budget na ito para maabot sa pangunguna ni Presidente Marcos ang bagong Pilipinas na pinapangarap ng bawat Pilipino. We are confident that this budget will provide certainty and hope during these uncertain times. Senate President Juan Miguel Mix F. Zubiri declared that the Senate does not have any confidential and intelligence funds or CIF next year. Meanwhile, Minority Leader Aquilino Coco Pimentel III voted against the ratification of the 2024 budget. More priority bills are also closer to becoming laws after the Senate ratified the Bicameral Conference Committee reports on the proposed new Philippine Passport Act, Bill granting cash gifts to octogenarians, nonagenarians, and centenarians, the No Permit, No Exam Prohibition Bill, and the proposed Philippine Salt Industry Development Act. The Senate has also ratified the BICAM reports on the proposed Tatak Pinoy or Proudly Filipino Act and the proposed Magna Carta of Filipino Seafarers. The Senate also passed on third and final reading several important measures. The State Universities and Colleges Land Use Development and Infrastructure Plan Bill, the Free College Entrance Examination Fees Bill, the proposed Self-Reliant Defense Posture Revitalization Act, and the bill strengthening penalties against the smuggling of agricultural products. Also passed on third reading were House bills creating barangays in Surigao del Sur and in Caloocan City. Senators were united in supporting the Philippines' ratification of the International Labor Organization Convention concerning the elimination of violence and harassment in the world of work or ILOC 119. On December 11, the Senate passed the resolution on its concurrence to the Treaty on Final Reading. The Upper Chamber also approved the resolutions concurring in the ratification of the agreement between the Philippines and Brunei to avoid double taxation and the prevention of fiscal evasion on income taxes and the agreement on social security between the Government of the Republic of the Philippines and the Government of the Republic of Korea. The Senate presented to Japan Ambassador Koshikawa Kazuhiko the adopted resolution expressing the Chamber's sympathies on the death of Hosoda Hiroyuki, former Speaker of the House of Representatives of the National Diet of Japan. The Chamber also adopted another resolution celebrating 75 years of the Philippines and Norway's diplomatic relations. The Philippines and Norway share a long and fruitful history of bilateral relations since the establishment of diplomatic relations way back on March 2, 1948. The bill seeking to establish the Negros Island region hurdled the Senate on second reading. Senate Bill No. 2507 aims to improve the delivery of basic government services in Negros Island. Also passed on second reading were 14 local bills that seek to create district engineering offices in various parts of the country. The Senate also approved on second reading various local basic education bills converting the Jose Abad Santos National High School, Tabayan Extension in Davao Occidental, into an independent national high school, the San Pablo National High School, Sabulan Extension, into an independent national high school, establishing the Progressive Senior High School and the Progressive Elementary School, both in Bacoor City, Cavite. The Bicameral Commission on Appointments confirmed the ad interim appointments of Health Secretary Chodoro Herbosa and Agriculture Secretary Francisco Chu Laurel Jr. 49 Foreign Service officials of the Department of Foreign Affairs also got the nod of the CA. 
CA Chairperson and Senate President Juan Miguel Mix F. Zubiri thanked the DFA for its help in making the recent 31st annual meeting of the Asia-Pacific Parliamentary Forum a success. I'd just like to also make a special mention to those who helped us in the Asia-Pacific Parliamentary Forum. First of all, it became very successful because of the help and assistance the Department of Foreign Affairs gave to us. Thank you very much to the ladies and gentlemen who, who really were on top of their game. The Senate will now be in session. All rise for the arrival of the Honorable Senate President and the Senators of the Republic of the Philippines. Back at the Senate, Senator Jingoy Ejercito Estrada sponsored Senate Bill No. 2501, which seeks to reform the pension system for military and uniformed personnel. Senator Francis Tol Tolentino brought before the plenary the Committee on Justice and Human Rights Recommendations following its probe into the reported maltreatment of domestic helper Elvi Vergara. Senator Estrada also sponsored the proposed Eddie Garcia Law, which seeks protection for movie and television industry workers. Senators strongly condemned the bombing at the Mindanao State University in Marawi City last December 3. During the plenary session, members of the Senate took turns in offering prayers for the victims and their families, while urging authorities to bring to justice the perpetrators of the attack. I am sure that this August chamber is one with me in expressing our heartfelt condolences to the families left behind, as well as our condemnation for this meaningless, barbaric, and cruel act. And I hope and pray that we continue the efforts and not slow down the efforts because of this tragic incident of extending our arms for peace to all our Kababayans in the region. My feeling is beyond words, and I am just so hard. Senators later met defense and security officials in an executive session for a briefing on the bomb. In a privileged speech, Senate President Pro Tempore Loren de Garda stressed the importance of the 28th United Nations Climate Change Conference being held in Dubai, UAE. COP28, or the 28th Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, is where the fate of our planet and our people and our future are negotiated, the place where the rhetoric of climate action is put to the test. We in the Senate must recognize the significance of the task at hand and the responsibility it entails for us as lawmakers and policy leaders of our climate vulnerable nation. Senator Tolentino also delivered a privileged speech declaring his support for the civilian-led Christmas convoy to the West Philippine Sea. And we say this to those who will attempt to block the said convoy, do not spoil our Christmas convoy. Senate Deputy Minority Leader Lisa Hontiveros, in a privileged speech, bared the alleged abuse of women and children occurring within the Kingdom of Jesus Christ, a religious group led by Pastor Apollo Kibuloy. Majority Leader Joel Villanueva led the discussion of the Higher, Technical, and Vocational Education Subcommittee on proposals to expand the provision of enterprise-based training in the country. Senator Wynne Gachalian represented the Senate as the Congressional Oversight Committee on the Official Development Assistance resumed its review of government projects funded by the ODAs. The Committee on Cultural Communities and Muslim Affairs tackled bills that would provide Muslim Filipinos better access to Sharia courts. The Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development resumed its probe on the labor dispute case involving workers of the Liberty Transport Corporation. Senator J.V. Ejercito presided over the Committee on Health and Demography's hearing on the Magna Carta of Barangay Health Workers, or BHWs, and other proposals for BHWs incentives and benefits. Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo led the Health and Demography's inquiry on the reported spike of respiratory illnesses and the country's preparedness to address it.